This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we've looked at our historic growth rate method to go through and calculate the growth that then appears in the cost of equity formula that later on we'll then go on to substitute into our weighted average cost of capital calculation. The issue that we had with the historic growth rate is that we made an assumption that whatever the growth had been in the past is then going to be the growth that we have into the future, which is not necessarily a, a realistic assumption, is it? What's happened in the past doesn't necessarily dictate what's going to happen within the future. So what we've got is an alternative model that predicts the growth rate based upon the amount of return that we've made. So if you like looking at the profits that have been made within the business, because the higher the level of profits that have been made, the more we can pay out as a dividend. And it also goes through as well and looks at what we retain within the business, because the more money that we retain within the business as opposed to paying it out with as a dividend means that we have more money to invest in more projects. And if we're investing in more projects, then we're going to generate a higher return. So essentially, Gordon's growth model is going through there and saying that our growth in our dividends is proportionate to the return that we get on the funds that have been invested and also the amount of those funds that have been retained. OK, uh, you could quite simply be given the return on the funds that you've invested. Uh, sometimes that return is also referred to, is it as your return on your capital employed. Uh, so take a profit figure and divide it by your capital employed figure. So some equity plus debt figure. But most of the time you'll be given those within the question. You'll be given the return. Uh, in terms of the proportion of funds that are retained, uh, just be aware in terms of your retention, you could be asked to calculate your retention. So that just goes through and takes your retained profit for the year and divides it by your profit for the year. Or alternatively, what you could have there is an alternative way of working it out is one less your payout ratio. So whatever you pay out of your profits. So if we paid out, say, 60% of our profits, then we are retaining 40%. If we pay out 30% of our profits, then we are retaining 70%. It's as simple as that. You need to work out your growth based on Gordon's, which is going through there and taking a return figure. So R, multiply it by a retention figure, which is there as B. You may be asked to calculate the retention figure and you could, if they were being really evil, ask you to work out your return based on your return on capital employed. OK, so let's go through and have a look at the example that we have there called Charlton. OK, Charlton is going to go through and use our brief knowledge on the Gordon's growth model to help us calculate the cost of equity. OK, you may have attempted it already. If so, great. I hope you got the correct answer. Uh, if you haven't done so and wish to attempt it before we chat our way through it, then stop the video and have a go at it. Uh, otherwise, let's go through and see how we get on. So what it wants us to go through and do, like all the other examples that we've worked through, is it wants us to work out the cost of equity. Is that the KE, isn't it? Uh, first bit that we need to be careful of is that the share price there is come div, isn't it? So when we're calculating the cost of equity, we need to work it out as X div. So we will need to adjust for any dividend to work out the X div price. Uh, we're told that the dividend is there as 45 cents, isn't it? So that there is D0. So if we subtract the 45 cents from the cum div price of $4.45, then you should get, I think, is it $3.95, which is the X div price, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't tell us how to calculate the growth rate, but we can use the information there that we have. Is it a return on capital employed? Is that there 15%? So that there is R, isn't it? 
and then we're told is it that we pay out 25 percent of our profit after tax as dividends so what you have there is your payout ratio okay so here that's 0.25 so if we we're to go through and pull all of that together in terms of the calculations then if we work out what the growth rate is first then the growth rate is the return so the return was there was it at 15 percent multiplied by the retention well that's one less that payout ratio isn't it okay the payout ratio we paid out 25 percent of our profits as a dividend so we must retain 75% of them. If you tap that into your calculator, then the growth rate that you should get is, I think, 11.25%. Okay. Uh, based upon that growth rate of 11.25, we can now go through, can't we, and work out what we have with regards to the cost of equity. So the cost of equity takes our dividend, which was 45 cents, so 0.45 dollars. Multiplies, is it by one plus the growth rate? Well, the growth rate was 11.25%, so 0.1125. Remember, we need to be careful now, don't we, about the X div price, because we were given the cum div price. So from that cum div price of $4.45, we need to deduct the dividend to get to the active price if we then go through and add on the growth rate you should be able to tap that into your calculator and work out that the cost of equity is 23.77 percent to two decimal places okay uh, again i think the difficulty that you have on that question there is working out the growth rate the growth rate you need to be careful when you're looking at the retention because the retention is one less the payout rate okay so if we have paid out 25 percent one less that 25 percent gives me 75 percent must be what we have retained okay have a go at the questions and see how you get on as we've said before if you've got any questions specifically please feel free to ask the tutor on the forum